Hi, I'm Mindy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about the books that I read for Horror Mayhem Week 2, my gothic horror books. And Horror Mayhem is a month-long reading event created by the bookish Bryants with a whole lot of great co-hosts including myself that will all be linked down below so you can check them out and I've been loving watching everybody's videos from the hosts as well as everyone else that's decided to participate as well and week two is just as great as week one. I loved everything I read again, so that's exciting. The first book I read was a short novel, about 218 pages, and that was The Elementals by Michael McDowell, and this was the first book from Michael McDowell that I've ever read and I'm really glad that I did. I've been meaning to read his books for so long and finally got to The Elementals. Now I know why this book is so beloved by many. This book was originally published in 1981 and this is a reprint from Valancourt, <clears throat> Valancourt Books. Uh, Valancourt Books has been republishing a lot of older stories so they are more readily available which I really appreciate especially in this case because this is a book that I knew I have wanted to read for so long and it was definitely worth it. So this is a book taking place in the South more specifically in Alabama, and it follows a family that owns this property on the Gulf um, with three houses on it. And these are like big, beautiful houses, but they're older and um, in a bit of disrepair. The electricity is shoddy, uh, doesn't work all the time, and it's a very isolated area. The gulf, the water rises at high tide and you are no longer able to get to or get out of the property, so sets up a very spooky, uh, claustrophobic, atmosphere, like not being able to escape, kind of closed in type of feeling um, with this property with the three beautiful houses on them. This family goes there for a bit of a vacation and they love the property, they love the houses. They've gone there a lot uh, throughout their lives and it is the youngest girl who is 13 years old first time going to the property and she really enjoys it as well and it's about her discovering the history behind this property and she is really intrigued with this third house that nobody lives in uh, and nobody goes into because the sand from the beach is is like coming up over the house, it's consuming the house pretty much. And this story has a lot to do with sand. Sand is the element in this story where a lot of the creepy imagery and scenes come from, which is very unique and really interesting. So a lot of the spookiness of the story comes from the natural elements with the high tide water making this a closed off place that can't be easily gotten to or gotten out of as well as the sand kind of 
consuming all type of thing and it's just so atmospheric and the southern heat as well can be very oppressive and that is shown expertly in this novel as well. A lot of the first half is a setup of the characters, the people, the relationships, these houses, describing them, describing the island, describing, or it's not really an island, but it becomes an island sometimes. Um, but just describing all this, all this atmosphere and developing the scene. And then there are some like genuine, genuinely creepy things that happen in this story. Um, it's not exactly a haunted house story. There are no ghosts. Um, there's this other, other entity going on called the elementals is pretty much what they call them and my goodness this is a fantastic fantastic novel I highly recommend it if you want to check out southern gothic and what it's all about and then I read one short story from R. St. Clair's collection, Women in Trouble. I read the last story in the collection called Mad as Wild Waves, and it was a great 21-page story with a great gothic feel, again with a secluded location. It's about a woman that goes to stay with her friend on this secluded island with a lovely gothic type mansion on it um, to help her plan her wedding. But of course now she's secluded in this remote place and as things develop, things are not exactly as they seem with her and her friend, things turn quite tragic as you might assume in a horror story so I really enjoyed this story oh hi Freya what are you doing the cats want to play <laughs> okay so I better finish filming here so I can go play with my kitties oh okay it was a great story and I look forward to reading more in this collection, which I will be doing in week three. There's a story I'll be reading from this collection called An Empty Vessel, which is a sci-fi horror story. And week three is cosmic horror. But on top of An Empty Vessel, I'll also be reading The Worm and His Kings by Haley Piper, which is a cosmic horror novella, which I have already started today. And I'm also listening to a cosmic horror audiobook, which is A Lush and Seething Hell by John Horner Jacobs, which is two novellas. The first one is really great so far. It's taking place in South America. It took me a minute to really get into the story, but now it's really taking off and it is kind of messed up. <laughs> but yeah, I am looking forward to seeing where it goes. And then I'll also be reading some H.P. Lovecraft stories. Um, Specifically, I want to read The Color Out of Space this week, and hopefully more, but we'll see, because I really want to watch the movie adaptation of The Color Out of Space as well, so I hope to do that soon as well. And those were the great gothic stories that I read last week, and the cosmic stories that I hope to read this week. 
I'd love to hear if you've read any of these stories and what you thought of them as well as mm, if you have a favorite gothic or cosmic story let me know down below and I will be back very soon with another book related video. Thanks. Bye.